Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us for today's uh, webinar. We're going to discuss some topics around the essential foundation of good design manufacturing. Uh, my name is John Pitcher, uh, and I'm an applications engineer uh, specifically focusing in the manufacturing space. So, uh, yeah, it's great to have you along, and I uh, hope you're all safe and well at this point in time. Just a couple of things about A2K before we get started. Um, A2K are all about fostering innovation through consulting and training. Um, A2K plays a, a vital role in helping the infrastructure, building, mining, construction and architecture and manufacturing industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services as an education and consultancy server. We're working with visionaries to shape the future of design and to, uh, and in turn, we enable them through innovation to minimize risk, improve productivity and achieve excellence. A2K, A2K Technologies is considered the business partner of choice and trusted advisor by our vendors and clients. We partner with our major software and hardware vendors to meet our clients' technology needs. And we strive to exceed client expectation by pinpointing their challenges and delivering solutions through experience and innovation. We work with companies of any size and nationally and abroad. So yeah, just a couple of things about myself. Um, I'm a certified Autodesk trainer and technical support engineer. I've uh, been working with A2K Technologies for uh, actually around 15 years or so now. Um, I've had 20 odd years prior experience in the manufacturing sector. So I um, did an apprenticeship as a fitter machinist many years ago and specialized in CNC programming. Uh, did some time in hydraulics and pneumatics and machine tool uh, manufacture and design. And yeah, as I said, for the past 14 or 15 years, I've been uh, connected to the Autodesk line of products and uh, I do uh, quite a bit of training um, and uh, consultancy work for the Inventor product, AutoCAD, and uh, some of the CAM systems also. Um, and more recently, I've been working in uh, the additive, man additive manufacturing space um, or 3D printing, uh, working with uh, various companies with regard to some aspects of that, not so much for trinkets, but obviously for production and uh, for information around that additive manufacturing space. <clears throat> so with regard to today's webinar, as I said, we're going to be talking quite a bit about good design and manufacturing. Most engineers would agree that there's a number of key principles or concepts that need to be applied for a successful outcome or a particular product. Concepts like innovation, usefulness, products need to be unobtrusive, environmentally friendly, and many other factors. The reality is that every design needs to be shared and communicated on a versatile and adaptive software platform. Autodesk has numerous solutions for managers, engineers, and designers that tick all of these boxes and allow for a smooth collaboration and interaction from concept and inception to prototyping during the design, production, and release phases of your product lifecycle. In this webinar, we'll look at Autodesk product design manufacturing industry collection and how it can help you streamline your workflows and remove those painful, costly uh, information islands or islands of information that might be causing blockages within your company and um, how we can work with that. So over the past decade or so, we've seen some fairly major changes in the way that we design and build products. So many industries and companies have applied uh, the solutions that Autodesk offer in regard to working with manufacturing and engineering software. So it inclu includes tools that we need to design, uh, that we can use to design our product rather, we can simulate, we can analyze dimensions, we can do a whole range of different things like CAM and nesting and uh, even creating factory layouts and things like that with regard to that. So all of that data is stored and managed in a secure project. And the nice thing about the Autodesk solution is uh, most of these tools now will talk seamlessly with each other and uh, we can work across this platform, which we commonly refer to as the product design 
manufacturing industry collection. So it consists of a range of different software tools that we can use for different aspects of business and uh, for helping us become more productive and more innovative in the way that we interact with other stakeholders in a particular organization. So with regard to the solution that Autodesk and A2K offer, uh, we have a range of different software, as you can see within the product design manufacturing collection. So rather than just using simply the AutoCAD tool or the Inventor tool, Autodesk have grouped these together and offered them at a very competitive price to allow users to make use of all of these particular tools. So many, many different tools here that we can utilize for different aspects of our design process and with regard to innovating and creating workable products and uh, services for industry. So in this particular collection of technologies, it enables us to connect um, on a single design platform. We can automate processes and accelerate production. We can obviously innovate very easily and uh, allow more time for innovation within our process now because we've got so much greater interaction between each of these particular products. So that has a positive impact on the way that we design and make products for our particular business. When we talk about connectivity, we can run our entire product development process on a single platform that's powered by not only 3D tools, which again are becoming very commonplace in the market now, but obviously we've got things for multi-axis CAM processing, um, so on and so forth within the production cycle. And we'll go into these areas in a little more depth in a moment. We can automate and leverage data. Um, we've got the option for AI and uh, cloud technology to reduce iterations and shorten the uh, prototyping sequence, et cetera, et cetera. And we've got quite a number of different uh, tools that we've got there. When it comes to production, we can obviously enable smart manufacturing, similar to CAD interfaces, but obviously we've got some really good interactions now where if a CAD model is updated, the CAM process will automatically update to reflect those design changes. And we'll certainly delve into that in a slightly deeper way shortly. So first up, I'd like to talk just a little bit about perhaps the design and engineering phase of your particular business and uh, how we can make that more efficient using the Autodesk solution. So the concept with design of products obviously begins with professional grade 2 and 3D CAD tools and uh, certainly flexible modeling tools for parametric and freeform design changes. We've got automated tools uh, for all sorts of different aspects of the manufacturing process, whether it be for sheet metal design, structural frames, mold creation for plastic injection molding, uh, things reducing repetitive tasks and reconfiguring parts using iLogic functionality. And uh, we'll touch on that in a little more detail in a moment. But obviously maintaining associative links between not only perhaps the Inventor CAD system, but you may find that you're receiving models in another CAD format. We can obviously import those into the Inventor system or the, uh, the system that we're using via AnyCAD, uh, quite an interesting functionality that allows us to interact with other technologies and other CAD systems. And also we've got the option now to interact quite heavily and quite strongly with the BIM type system, where if you're working with Revit models, we can now export out of Inventor as an RFA file or an IFC file for an, a, a Revit family. So we've got quite a lot of custom architectural interactions there with the Revit family of products. So when we talk about mechanical design, most 3D CAD software providers encourage companies to move from a 2D environment into a 3D. And look, certainly not denying that that is a very good path to take, but some instances, 2D is still more valuable. For instance, uh, electrical schematics are still a very common uh, part, but, but linking that with a 3D type system uh, will give us much greater overall engineering productivity and help us to continue to use some of those 
uh, great tools that we've had for many years in the AutoCAD space and uh, interact with them nicely within our 3D system. And uh, obviously that allows us to uh, create associative links between those software packages and uh, work with all of that particular information and detail within our CAD environment. Obviously moving further forward with that, we've got things like digital simulation and visualization and uh, preparing things for manufacturing and being able to physically simulate and visualize a lot of these tools before we even talk about uh, purchasing product, et cetera, as we work in that particular life cycle. Within the inventor system, um, we've got an amazing rule-based system that allows us to create a, uh, a very, very useful um, variation or uh, iteration type design within our inventor model. Uh, you might have heard of the iLogic element of, uh, of inventor. It's a very, very powerful tool and one that's certainly worth uh, exploring. A2K do offer training in all of these aspects, obviously. And um, iLogic is something that if you're working with various iterations within your uh, modeling scenario, if you're doing repetitive tasks and things like that, certainly worth looking at the inventor iLogic functionality. And certainly being able to do this much, much quicker enables us to win more business and become more innovative getting our product to the customer in a quicker fashion and uh, our manufacturing processes are then able to be uh, increased accordingly. Some of the other things that we often talk about with uh, the 3D modeling tools is uh, parametric and freeform modeling. And certainly Inventor will help us uh, be able to do that. And uh, certainly we can work with that. And for those of you that have already used Inventor, uh, you may have come across the, uh, the content center libraries, which consists of over 1.2 million parts now, bolts, nuts, washers, split pins, circlips, O-rings, um, hydraulic fittings. Um, yeah, quite a number of different elements that are available to us within the content center library inside of Inventor. Some of the other tools as well are the component generators for generating things like spur gears, or as you can see there on the slide, um, roller chains or uh, worm gears and worm wheels, things like drum brake systems and numerous other engineering data and uh, systems of components that we can create in an automated fashion simply by specifying the required gear ratio, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got quite a lot of handbooks and calculators inside of Inventor, so we don't have to leave the application to pick up load ratings or uh, life cycle ratings for bearings and things like that. So quite, uh, quite a number of powerful tools within the Inventor system. I guess the other big thing with regard to the way we design in the, the 21st century is the amount of data that we're creating and consuming as part of our process and uh, for much of our scenario where we're working with multiple software systems um, and working with that. So being able to collaborate and to, uh, to work and integrate with other systems, to be able to share designs online with the Autodesk online viewer, to be able to share a 3D model in its, um, in its full 3D state directly within an internet browser, for instance, is a, a new tool called Shared Views within Inventor that's certainly worth exploring if you're wanting to share your designs with uh, customers or uh, suppliers or clients, or whatever it might be that you wish to share those with. Also being able to use all the, the different exploded assembly views, uh, we can certainly use all of these tools. We can even do some markup and redlining within the, uh, within the shared views environment, which is completely an online based system. So very, very good for being able to share design details from one particular area of your business with maybe a client or a supplier. So most, uh, most CAD software that we talk about um, in today's world has some entry level of FEA type software where we can do thermal studies, vibration studies, things like nonlinear buckling, et cetera, et cetera. And we can use all of that detail to 
look at the way the stress is going to impact upon our particular model or design. But I guess the big thing with this is, are those results telling you the actual entire story? And I guess this is where Inventor Nastran offers advanced simulation studies that are set up and solved, and we can observe the results without leaving the, the standard Inventor interface. We're not having to go off to another product to be able to, uh, to do that. So yeah, we've got quite a number of different options for design studies and for simulation studies that offer a complete understanding of what our product is going to do and the performance of that particular product with, with very, very accurate results. And of course, the uh, Nastran is, is quickly becoming the uh, industry accepted standard. So now the fact that that is included within your Inventor Professional, we've got uh, all those options with regard to that. We can also collaborate quite effectively, as I mentioned before, with, uh, with products like AutoCAD Electrical. So there's some very, very uh, good linking options for working with uh, a schematic drawing and also utilizing the 3D modeling functionalities to give a good visual of what your model will actually work. And so we can end up with some very impressive impact on the way that our engineering workflow is generated. So yeah, certainly that electromechanical link between Autodesk Inventor and the AutoCAD electrical product is very, very uh, useful for being able to show those, uh, those links. That is a live link also, and something that's certainly worth considering if you're looking at working with um, electromechanical type systems within your design. So I guess the whole concept that we're talking about is that AutoCAD and Inventor and the Autodesk Product Design Manufacturing Collection can really offer us a, a great foundation for working with uh, good design and for creating innovative products that uh, come to market in the quickest possible way. So certainly uh, some valuable details there with regard to working with each of those options. With regard to the production space, I'd like to just uh, quickly talk a little bit more about how we can work with production type situations. So within Inventor now, we've got a complete set of documentation tools to get accurate information to the shop floor, whether it's in the form of a 2D drawing or a 3D model, where we can analyze the interference and clearances inside of the physical 3D model. So the great thing about this is that Inventor provides a model-based definition system, including fabrication instructions, et cetera, et cetera, that we can include in our 3D model. So obviously this reduces the need for traditional drawings in the 2D space, uh, effectively, um, or especially when you're working in a CNC type environment where your um, GD and T or your, your general tolerancing and uh, dimensioning can be visualized directly on the 3D model with different references, et cetera, et cetera, that we can work with. So some really important elements with regard to working with 3D annotations inside of the inventor system. I guess for anybody that's been involved in production or manufacture would know the sense of achievement or accomplishment once your assembly all fits together perfectly and you've got nice clearances and, and correct tolerancing. Manufacturing tolerances have been, uh, had, a, had a massive impact on the, uh, the cost of a part. And certainly we don't want to apply tolerances that are unnecessary. So basically when we're creating componentry and building an engineering design, we need to look at the needed tolerance. Um, obviously, if we're going to super finish a particular part, uh, we want to make sure that that is the necessary tolerance uh, environment. So things like tolerance stack up um, can sometimes prevent our assembly from working correctly or fitting together. So the tolerance analysis tool inside of Inventor allows us to make informed decisions while specifying particular manufacturing tolerances. So it's again, a very, very powerful tool that allows us to consider before we start manufacturing um, the, the, the required tolerances for a particular component uh, to create um, a versatile functionality for fit and form within our particular 
manufacturing design. Inventor also includes a very powerful cam engine these days, and uh, we've got what's called Inventor Cam. Uh, again, launched directly from within the software, so we're not having to leave the um, the software to be able to work with the the cam tools within the uh, the system. Um, obviously, we've got from two and a half D right up to five axes machining, as well as uh, lathe mill turn applications. And uh, there's a lot of versatility within this system to pick up post processes for typical type of machines. And uh, we've actually, Autodesk have also created an open source system for sharing post processes for specific machines. So rather than having to pay thousands of dollars for your post processor now, these are stored online and uh, you can quite happily download the ones for your particular control on your CNC system uh, and for your particular machine. And uh, they are editable and uh, there's a nice little interface that Autodesk have included for editing our post processor to get our code to, uh, to uh, be generated in the correct format for our particular uh, CNC system. Another very powerful tool that's been included in the last few releases of Inventor is Inventor Nesting, where we can uh, basically set up and optimize yield for raw material. So again, works directly from inside the Inventor interface. And nesting studies can be created based on uh, similar components or interacting components to fit on, say, a 24 by 1200 sheet. Um, and obviously the material thickness is, uh, is directed there and we can separate those out and uh, generate an optimized cutting path for our profile or laser cutter. Again, all directly from inside the Inventor interface. So some very interesting uh, things going on with regard to how we can optimize and uh, obviously reduce waste within our manufacturing uh, manufacturing scenario particularly. What about when it comes to factory design? Well, basically, um, when we go to create a, a fantastic new product, obviously that's just the beginning. But obviously the way we make it needs to also be considered and uh, you know we need to obviously cut down on the amount of time used every time a part is picked up by a human obviously there's a cost to it so we need to know that some of those processes are being done in the most efficient way so production processing is is quite a big science these days and things like spaghetti mapping and a lot of those different engineering disciplines and tools that we talk about uh, certainly the factory design utilities that's included with your product design manufacturing collection will give you some really good outcomes on how to shorten the life cycle or travel process or path through your production facility to ensure you are reducing the amount of waste uh, through the, the particular system. So some really good, uh, good tools available to us inside of the product design manufacturing collection. Um, by way of the factory design utilities, um, which has a library of uh, things like conveyors and product movement type tools that we can utilize for working with our uh, production system. Just a brief discussion about the sales space then, and obviously that's quite an important part of the, uh, the whole process. So when it comes to designing tools and, and working with that, um, we obviously need to be able to convey that message uh, to a situation or to, uh, to clients who may be looking to purchase our products. So um, yeah, many, many tools and uh, millions of components that are available to us within the, the CAD system. Um, so often with a CAD system, we need to be able to bring these together to do walkthroughs or to, to perhaps show our customers how our product is going to be created. Navisworks is, is a very powerful tool that again is included with your product design manufacturing collection. And uh, this application is built not only for design reviews, but yeah, as I mentioned, for walkthroughs, but also for clash detection and management between models that have been imported from all different CAD systems. So you might be using a different CAD system and obviously we can synchronize uh, the equipment 
within our project management software simulate the interview of all of those elements within our particular system. So yeah, the concept with regard to that uh, as well, with regard to um, conveying a message, obviously being able to create renders and animations of your product. Obviously anybody can do a screen capture these days, but being able to create a really nice render um, with shadowing and lighting styles and textures and uh, different elements with regard to how you're going to actually build your product, really to showcase your product or to show off your product to customers. So obviously displaying all those different lighting styles and shadows, shadows and things like that within your 3D CAD system helps you remain competitive because obviously um, we need to be able to see what the purpose of, um, of that. And certainly creating a compelling visual effect has a massive impact on potential customers. Um, like I said, whether it's a rendered image or whether we're going to go down the line of 3D Studio Max, which again is included in your product design manufacturing collection and will allow us to, uh, to be able to visualize and create some very nice renderings and visualizations of how our component is going to be created. One other aspect that's probably connected uh, to our initial um, discussion around engineering design, which I've sort of left till last, um, is quite a, a clever aspect of the product design manufacturing collection called generative design. Now, some of you may have heard of this, where basically we do a um, effectively a CGI type system, but for a mechanical design. So what we've got is a, um, a computer generated type system where we can analyze based on uh, certain constraints and uh, and pressures and stresses on a model, we can animate a, a sequence. So with generative design, what we can actually do is look at the particular parameters that have been set or the particular design uh, or the critical factors of our design. We can lock those in and then have our software do what we call a generative design process so we can see where we can reduce material. So obviously this logic has been used for many years in uh, the likes of NASA and Boeing and companies like that that, uh, that are looking to cut down weight. Um, they've been doing this for, for 10, 20 years. But um, now this particular functionality is available inside of your product design manufacturing collection, either through the inventor interface or as per the screen here, we can also do this in Fusion 360. So generative design is a, uh, is a very clever functionality. Basically what it does, it allows us to explore new design ideas that maybe we'd never thought of previously. And basically we use the power of the cloud to look at multiple solutions that can be produced simultaneously based on the input um, and load requirements. And we can tell the software that we want to reduce the weight by 40% or 20% uh, or whatever it might be, or we want to reduce the cost by X, Y, or Z, and uh, so on and so forth. So this functionality is now being uh, utilized in the automotive industry quite a lot more. Obviously any product that needs to move, the more lightweight that it can be, uh, the better. So reducing waste again within a particular system is, um, is quite a, a critical area of all aspects. And we're seeing this now flow down into the automotive technologies. So this particular example I've got on screen at the moment is a, um, a seatbelt bracket that was developed by General Motors Holden, or General Motors, should I say. Um, and basically they, uh, they looked at how they could make this part uh, more efficiently. Um, so the original component was created at, out of eight uh, pressed metal or machined or manufactured parts and uh, effectively um, uh, came down to, uh, to working uh, to look at the different uh, strength factors and variables. And as you can see, the computer generated iterations of that were able to be explored to see how that particular situation um, yeah, could help in uh, 
creating those eight separate components. Um, we could 3D print or cast a part that then is more versatile, much stronger and uh, more useful. So what I'd like to do now is uh, play a, a short animation for you. Um, <clears throat> this is another great example of a, uh, a generative design study where we've got a motorcycle. Um, as you can see there, we've got um, uh, the motorcycle is obviously missing it by using what we call generative design. So what I've got is a, uh, a short clip here that I'd like to just play for you and you'll be able to see basically how this works. So we set up what we call some connection points and uh, and some points where our uh, so these are obviously the critical aspects of the design we then set up what we call some um, obstacle points where we shouldn't interact with the two and we look at the different types of manufacturing processes and basically this all gets generated through a system that will spit out multiple iterations as you can see of the swing arm and different ways that we could use it. And we can narrow that down based on strength or cost or uh, whatever it might be. Um, I hope this is coming through okay. Sometimes this video is a little bit glitchy, but um, I think you can all get the idea there that um, as you can see, we can uh, test the iteration of each of those swing arms to see how this could be, could be done. And as you can see there, this could be manufactured in Sydney, Australia. So there you go, somebody, um, within that, we can uh, then go and run a, a 3D print of that particular part, look at the stress of the part, see the machining processes and cycles of each of those particular items within the, uh, the system there. So yeah, quite a, um, a clever uh, bit of technology that's available to us. And um, yeah, just another fantastic uh, tool that has been made available uh, inside of the product design manufacturing collection from Autodesk. So yeah, many, many different things. As you can see on this little chart here that um, the nice thing about having all these tools interactive is that we make a change in one place and so that populates down through the uh, the model cycle. So effectively what we, uh, what we can do is um, yeah, have a, a, a central model and then obviously apply the, those various tools to uh, different aspects of our uh, mechanical design process. So look, some, uh, some really powerful tools and uh, being able to use those tools um, in a situation where we've got uh, many, many products coming to market and uh, being able to do that is uh, something that Autodesk have been striving for over some time. And so really at the end of the day, the design manufacturing industry collection, the product design manufacturing industry collection ensures that your processes can be done concurrently, whether we work in a 2D environment or a 3D environment. So there's, a, there's many, many changes that can be populated throughout the system. As I mentioned earlier, the concept of being able to model something in the 3D space, create a CAM cycle or a CNC machining cycle, and then simply update the CAD model and have the CAM toolpath update itself uh, semi-automatically uh, just by reselecting the, um, so the model is obviously interactive with the, the CAM system because it's all based inside of your inventor system. So the great thing about all of this is that it's all interactive. And obviously, as you can see on the outspring there, all of this can be managed and your data can all be stored securely in the Autodesk Vault system for data management. And uh, we've got that secure and uh, we've got like, like that, which is all managed within the Vault system. So I've just got a couple of slides here about a, a couple of companies that have used this. Um, Claudius Peters is a, uh, a company that have uh, been working in the manufacturing space for many, many years. Um, I think they're over 100 years old, this company, and uh, they've been working um, on keeping their competitive, competitive advantage by investing in new technologies. And uh, so, yeah, quite a uh, interesting um, 
study there. They're using a lot of the Autodesk products to, uh, to keep their designs current and uh, been working through a lot of these particular areas. And they've found massive savings by working with uh, many of these tools by applying some of the great software that Autodesk have within their product design manufacturing collection. Just another one here, a company by the name of Fleece. Um, again, um, one of the comments from their, uh, their engineers was when we change a model, InventorCam automatically updates. We start driving a few dimensions in InventorCam and uh, just know exactly what we want to, to manufacture. So great processes there that are being used inside the manufacturing facilities around the world to, uh, to streamline and to obviously make processes work more interactively together. So really the long and the short of it is the, uh, the product design and manufacturing collection from Autodesk gives you a, a massive advantage in that so many of these tools interact nicely with each other. Uh, they're all part of the same collection and we can utilize and work with that software, uh, not only to make great products, but also to get the right product at the right time at the right price. So that's really the bottom line with uh, with manufacturing is to be able to know all of these factors um, before we even start to cut metal or whatever it might be that's included as part of our design process. So thanks for uh, tuning in today. I hope you've uh, found what we had to say valuable. There's, um, there'll be a bit of, I'll stay online for five or 10 minutes. If there's any questions or queries, uh, feel free to put your questions into the Zoom chat window. Um, you'll be able to, uh, should see there on your Zoom screen, a, a little menu that allows you to, to place questions in there. So um, if you'd like to know anything more about uh, A2K, we, uh, we frequently run these sort of webinars uh, around all sorts of different software. Um, so we run many, many different uh, um, webinars from different times. So feel free to visit the link on your screen and uh, you'll find uh, a whole range of different webinars on different topics that, that A2K run and uh, that we utilize, that we do for various uh, various disciplines. But also feel free to contact us at uh, info at A2K Technologies. Um, we'll certainly be uh, having more of these to come. And uh, if you've got any questions about anything we've talked about today, as I said, if you would like me to try and answer the question uh, live now, I'm more than happy to do that. I'll stay online, as I said, for another five or 10 minutes. Um, but look, thanks again for joining us. Stay safe and well, everybody. And uh, all the very best with your production manufacturing processes moving forward. And I'm sure if you partner with Autodesk and A2K, we can uh, give you some assistance in, in that space. So thanks again for tuning in and uh, yeah, stay safe and well.